All right, it's time for an emergency reaction video. Just finished watching the 76ers versus the Celtics. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to try to stay as objective as possible and not let my biases come through here. But it was a good basketball game. That was a very, inter well, it was entertaining. It was exciting at the end of the game, particularly in overtime and the end of the fourth quarter, as any game like that will be. But sometimes I just question, why do I watch stuff that's just going to make me angry all the time? Uh, for two reasons. First, I well, multiple reasons, maybe more than two. One of them is being, and then this will tie into another reason, but Embiid, I am just, I'm sincerely not a fan of that guy. I just cannot stand how he's cried for basically the past two years about being the MVP. And it seems to me like that's the most important thing for him. And just his style of play and, and everything involved with his whole shtick and everything that goes on in Philadelphia with it, including their GM and Doc Rivers, it's just, it drives me nuts. I just can't stand that. And and his style of play is what is another contributing factor to my dislike of it, not just his talk about the MVP, but the fact that he's just a flop artist. I'm like, is this your MVP? That's really a question I ask all the time when I watch the Sixers. So I can't stand the style of play, even with Harden, who, look, I can't say enough good things about how he's playing right now. I mean, obviously he did not do, <laughs> he looked like he had game one and game four, but game two and three were horrendous. But Harden as well, complete flop artist. And that's, though the two catalysts of the Sixers are, are flop artists. So that drives me nuts. Then Doris Burke and Mark, Mark Davis or whatever, Mark Jones, whatever his name is. I think it's Mark Jones. They drive me nuts. That is the worst broadcast team I've heard and it's the worst broadcast team in the history of sports I mean the pandering to players their lack of basketball knowledge and just it's just I I literally want to punch it the hole in my tv I'm not even kidding you I mean it is the worst so that's why I asked myself why am I even watching this if I'm just gonna get angry the whole time and the other thing not just flopping with the 76ers and their stars but in general now I think I'm gonna make a video on this but the problem of the of the falling down in the NBA is is just getting completely out of hand. And it's like you watch Steph Curry and every time he shoots the ball, he's falling to the ground for some apparent reason. It's just, it's too much. They used to kick out and they, they've changed the rules so where you can't kick your feet out and get the foul. They got to stop them from falling. They should be like, if you fall, it's an offensive foul or something because that is just completely out of hand and it's just weird. You're telling me you can't stand up? You're some six foot... You know, in some cases, you know, Embiid's case, he's like seven feet, but even a small guard like Curry, small, six foot three, you know, some of these guys, six foot eight, you can't stay on your feet. I mean, it's crazy, but I don't want to complain too much. It was an entertaining game. I felt like, look, the Sixers were on and for most of the game, uh, particularly Harden, that guy, he is the X factor with this team. It's becoming more and more clear when he is at his best. And it, I didn't think he still had this in him. He really looks like his prime self, uh, in game, especially in games one and four. When he has, when he plays like this, they are in the game and most likely have a very good chance to win. And so while everybody will rant and rave about the MVP, who I would personally have cast my vote for Jokic and then Giannis and then Embiid, but while people will rant and rave about the MVP, it seems to me that Harden is the most important player on this team, in my opinion. Uh, you know, he had 45 in game one, 42 here. He is just not, he's not missing. He went 16 for 23, six for nine from three with the clutch three at the end of the game. Just, man, that guy, he went off and you got to give him credit. In the first half, Nyang was hitting threes. Um, you know, Embiid was getting his points. I'm not denying that Embiid's a good player, but... You know, he wasn't much, uh, you know, towards the end of the game, but they were on. So I will give him that, you know, but the uh, the Celtics who were frustrating me as well. I felt like they were not uh, penetrating enough, uh, getting to the rim in the first half. And, and even at points in the third quarter, it was, that was a problem. I felt like Tatum was, he was looking for the foul, which is something he does that kind of disappoints me. But, you know, I mean, Booker does it sometimes, but it's just, you're, they're looking for the foul too much. I wish he would just go up strong when he's attacking the rim. But I felt like there was a lot of that in the first half and they were missing shots, but they stuck around and, you know, kept it close in the third. And, and then in the fourth, they stepped up their defense in a big way. And so, so let's switch into the Celtics here. Their MVP, it's hard. I mean, it's it's tough between Tatum. Tatum's probably the MVP. That guy, 
even though he was, his shot wasn't falling and he was just kind of off a little bit in the first three quarters. I mean, although he had 13 in the third, but he had 18 rebounds, six assists, four blocks, 24, ended up with 24 points. I mean, that guy was their MVP. But if you had to give a co-MVP to his Al Horford, he absolutely owned Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter to the point where it looked like Joel Embiid had the yips. He did not want the ball. It was hot potato every time he touched it. Horford blocked him three times in the fourth quarter and Embiid just wanted to get the ball out of his hands as quick as possible. I mean, it was really eye-opening. And then I asked that question, is this your MVP? I'll let it be. But I was, you know, the Celtics played very well, hit big shots. Brogdon was awesome. Brown was great early. Tatum came alive. Smart hit some shots. I mean, you know, they really played well. It was their defense, and they got to the rim better in the second half. It was just all clicking. Or in the fourth quarter, it was just all clicking. But once it... Once the they didn't hit that shot, once Smart hit missed that three at the end of regulation, I was like, ooh, I don't feel great about this. I felt like that was a game where the Celtics probably wanted to steal it in regulation because I felt like they really did steal it. They were not playing well. They were down most of the game, but they were able to close it and take the lead in the fourth. But I felt like that was when they needed to steal. And then when you came to overtime, it was the Harden show. I mean, it's just this guy, he just carried the Sixers on his back. Now Embiid looked a little bit better in the in overtime. But Harden hit that three at the end. I mean, Tatum nails hit that three to give the give the uh, Celtics the lead. And one thing I will say, I, I know Joe Mazzulla has gotten a lot of criticism this year, but I loved how he coached this game. You know, particularly in the fourth and overtime, I loved the uh, you know his timeout. Uh, he called a nice timeout, I believe, in overtime. But then at the end of the fourth, he let them play, let them get the shot smart, and it was a great look. He just missed. And even though that last possession where they took too long and ended up kicking out Smart who hit the shot, but time had already expired, I liked the fact that he kind of let his team play. It was a, I, I appreciated that. And I think, you know, sometimes he gets a lot of criticism, but I want to point that out. So the Celtics, I mean, for as mediocre as they were playing in the first couple quarters, they really did, they really did uh, come alive in the fourth. And hey, you know, you got to give credit to the Sixers. They were on, they were hitting their shots, but man, I felt like the Celtics, that was a game they should have got. But I still do think the Celtics will win this series uh, probably in six. It's my opinion. But uh, man, like I said, sometimes I want to punch a hole in my TV just listening to the announcers. I I honestly prefer to listen it to mute, uh, listen to it on mute, the game. I mean, this is just the worst announcing crew in the, in the history of sports. So I think that's all I got. I mean, it was an exciting game, like I said. So 2-2, two, two, heading back to Boston. It's uh, Boston and Philly. It's hard to beat as far as uh, matchups in the Eastern Conference. So let me know what you guys thought of the game. Let me know what you think of Doris Burke, who I think is our, arguably the worst color commentator of all time. And Mark Jones, I think, is his name. I actually really just want to look this up. Doris Burke. Sorry, this is Mark Jones. Yes. The worst team. Mark Jones just panders to every player, tries to use big word. I mean, it's just completely obnoxious. And Doris Burke, I just, man, the worst. So let me know what you think about them. Let me th know what you think about the game. I'll ask you, is that really your MVP? You know, let me know what you think about that. And uh, I'll probably get a reaction to the Suns game tonight.